Hi, this is Todd Runstead at uh, New Hope Network, naturalproductsinsider.coms. And uh, we got a really nice little Toddcast going on today. You know, in the life of every uh, supplement brand, you always want to go big, right? You, you want to get into the store. You want people to like your product. You want to go into the regional. You want to get into the national. You want to, you know, you want to be successful. And so we got a great story with you today. Uh, I, I want to introduce you to, um, to the brand is called NatureAid, uh, a, a legacy brand has been around for almost a century. And um, the two guys who are now running it, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Cook, as I like to say, Kareem Cook, Chief Marketing Officer, Claude Tellis, the CEO. Um, uh, boys, welcome. And uh, it, it's good to talk to you. Uh, now, quickly, uh, you two bought this legacy company, NatureAid, which has been around for a heck of a long time. Uh, what, what year was that when, when you guys got involved here? 2012. 2012. All right. So you, you're, you've been toiling in not quite obscurity. You know, why did you think that was a good idea? I mean, where were you guys in your lives where you were like, hey, let's get into the supplement business? I'll let Kareem take that. Take that. Hey, well, well, we have a we have a bit of a history prior to buying Nature Aid. So we um we actually moved out to California in 2002, and uh, you know Claude and I had always been, in, we had always been inspired and, and and motivated by the the alarming rates of 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 diet related illnesses, in particular diabetes. We both come from large families. We both had a lot of family members pass from it, and even to this day. Um, I had two, I had a cousin and aunt pass from COVID, and it was based on an underlying diabetes. Um, Claude had two uncles pass and have their limbs amputated as well. And really what, what was happening then was we started a healthy vending machine company. We came out here, we saw all these overweight kids, and we decided to do something about it. We founded a healthy vending machine company. We uh, led a movement which, which resulted in junk food being removed from all the public high schools and middle schools in Los Angeles and resulting in a law being changed. And we ended up getting the contract for every single public high school, middle school in LA, removing the junk, adding uh, healthy products. And that was within our first two years being in LA. And that was so successful, earned us a, uh, a visit to uh, Arkansas to meet with Governor Huckabee, President Clinton, and talk about what we had done in LA. They wanted to broker the same sort of arrangement nationwide, uh, a piece, um, and remove junk food and sodas from schools. And it also put us on a, a radar for who's who at Duke University. And Claude and I said to ourselves, you know what? If we're going to meet with the trustee board, which we were invited to meet, meet with, you know, we, why don't we raise some money and actually try to, to, uh, to realize our ultimate goal of really addressing diabetes and diet-related illnesses on a nationwide level? Let's buy a company where we can direct it in that, push it, send it in that direction. And so we saw a nature aid which had been around, like you said, since 1926, legacy brand, uh, pioneered uh, plant-based shakes in this country, um, and just so happened to be coming, be turning around and it going through a bankruptcy. And Claude and I were able to buy it, at a, you know, could, could afford to buy it. We bought it and we ended up re-steering the ship and reimagining the company to really address the needs that were most um, critical and most important to us. That's that's really great. And so I, I met you guys a couple of years ago at one of the natural products expos. Mm -hmm. And so those these are shows where, you know, there's thousands of booths there. Everybody's got a product. They want to get on the store shelves. And so the retailers come in, they get in for free and they go and look around and, and see what, what you got. The big news is right now is NatureAid is now in Costco, baby. <laughs> that's, that's big box time, is that not? That's right. So, so, so l let me ask you. Well, well, first, I mean, is this like the final four, or have you guys just won the national championship? <laughs> I think it's the final four because I think you, you know, you got to survive in advance and you got to deliver. So, uh, we're asking everybody who's watching the show to help us deliver. Um, as far as we know, we're the first black owned company to ever get into Costco, definitely to ever be in our section in Costco. And um, we think that's, that's tremendous. And so kudos to, to Costco for taking a shot. Um, but I think bigger than that was that, um, I think you were you know, saying in other comments, 
know, how do we get into Costco? And I think a big part of it was that we'd always been inspired by our, our vision and mission back in 2012, but we were really, um, you know, running the company as business people. And once we really leaned into our vision and mission around reversing pre-diabetes, you know, something that afflicts 86 million Americans, many, many of whom are people of color, um, that's when we, we made the cover of Whole Foods Magazine. And that's when uh, the Costco buyer, uh, buyers came to see us. So, wow. So I, I was going to ask you, how, how long was that in the making? So only about maybe a year relationship of, of you kind of you and Costco kind of doing a dance together? Well, I would say it's a, it was a, a five year journey. Um, our goal told that, um, you know, you deliver in the natural health food space, uh, then you graduate to, uh, you know, FDM distribution and try to show POS throughput and then um, graduate to, you know, uh, to, to a Costco. And we had seen them many times at ECRMs and things and was just never um, be really being considered. And, um, you know, it seemed as though it was something that wasn't going to happen. And oddly enough, by actually um, scaling back the company, focusing on our vision and mission authentically and linking that with our, our products and our whole merchandising strategy ended up being the, um, the calling card that really that they actually, you know, turns out they were most impressed by that. You know, that that is a, a just a, a great story to hear because in, you know in the natural products business so many companies are are mission driven it, it really to me it, it different it differentiates this sort of category of consumer goods versus anybody else you know like everybody's into it and so I, I really like how you you know you said hey let's just let's get back to who we really are and then good things happen that's that's a message that a lot of companies I, I think can can really, uh, you know, take that lesson to heart and say, let, let's not forget who we are, what's in our heart. So t talk a little bit about how, how your heart really ha has driven this business success. You know, well, a lot of times people think, well, you need money and you need good brains, but you guys got a lot of heart. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll say a few words in the hands of Kareem, but I'll say that, um, you know, as he said, we both have been um, inspired by our families. Uh, my family's from Louisiana. My dad was the first black to graduate from LSU Medical School. However, everyone, including him, eats terribly and has eaten terribly for years. And so when you have the doctors eating poorly and everyone else eating poorly, you just can have a culture of, of poor eating. And I think that, um, as Kareem mentioned, I had an uncle who um, walked into a hospital, was put into a coma, had to uh, amputate both legs and then died uh, on the operating table. And then, um, you know, a year or two later, three of his brothers all, you know, had type two diabetes. And it seems that down in Louisiana, no one really, you know, really links the fact that we eat a lot of fried foods, eat a lot of high sugar, a lot of, a lot of drinking, people are drinking like six packs a day type thing, which obviously leads to poor eating. And so these linkages have been, you know, generation after generation. We even, um, think it's a, go a good thing. Like, it's like, it's like, you know, go to one grandmother's house, eat, and then go to the other and eat and pass out. And so we call it the itis, actually, it's actually got a name. <laughs> so, um, and so when, when I started seeing these linkages and then seeing um, some of these documentaries, you know, what the health, you know, um, you know, forks over knives, cowspiracy, you know, game changers. And now, now a badass vegan, our spokesperson is coming out with, uh, they're trying to kill us linking hip hop and, and, and health outcomes. Um, I think it, it started to really pop for me and I changed my, my whole um, eating. I'm intermittent fasting, eating mostly um, plant-based, but some seafood in there and lost 30 pounds over COVID. And so I think that um, once I embraced a lifestyle like that and, and really incorporated our product into my system um, of breaking the fast, um, I think I was much more credible with my friends and I think we were all, as a company, much more credible in terms of our, our pitches to uh, retailers. That's cool. Cream, you got anything to add about a little heart message? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, um, you know, we, we probably did, we deal, we, we've had to deal with uh, something that most companies in the space don't have to deal with. And, and I'll tell you, it was a, a critical moment for us because when we first bought the company, you know, Claude and I were, we were trying to decide, you know, do we let this company, do we let people know this is a black owned company now? You know, it's been around for, you know, 90 years. 
uh, how are people going to respond to that? And so for a while, we didn't, uh, we didn't get the NBE certification. And, uh, and we just wanted to compete uh, with, with, with great products that were better than what was out there. And, and we were doing that. And then we had a president who, uh, who convinced us that we should get the MBE certification, let everyone know we're a black owned company. And then we got dropped by, uh, by our biggest, uh, our, our biggest um, uh, customer uh, because there was a buyer there who actually turned around and, and told someone that he didn't want to support, he didn't, he didn't believe in affirmative action. You know, mind you, the company had actually been in that account since 2008 before we bought it. But now that he knew that, um, he did, you know, he, uh, we, we, we got what was coming to us. Unfortunately, it sometimes comes with, uh, with you know, that's the reality of, of, of this country and sometimes doing business in it when you're a black owned company. Um, that, was a, that was a gut check. Uh, you know, we complained. He threatened us, told us that we go to supply diversity. We'll never get into the, that, that store again. Uh, and then, you know, we had to deal with it. That, that was, that was, a, that was a, a big deal for the company, big blow. But then we turned it around in 2020 and, uh, and all of a sudden people were, people were leaning into trying to, uh, they're recognizing the disparities of opportunity between, you know, black or for black owned companies. And it was able to benefit us. You know, we didn't get any distribution because we were black. We ended up getting distribution because we actually had products that had been proven to beat the, the top products out there when we compete head to head in different, uh, different outlets. And, uh, people were open to trying to to level the playing field, and so we were able to get distribution not only in Costco, but Whole Foods coming up in April. And we also got uh, we also got uh, full distribution into Target, and all that's happened in the last four months. Whew. What a whirlwind, man! I, I'm I'm sorry to hear that, that that story. I mean that that's that's real life right in your face. That's um that's a crying shame, you know. And it, it, you've talked previously about you know, other challenges you had just, just in like getting startup capital, just getting investments that, that you kind of feel like maybe, Hey, we're a little bit, you know, maybe we don't have access to the money. If, uh, if, if we were white, like, do, do you see that there were some of those issues going on uh, as you guys have gone on your corporate journey here? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, uh, it's really been uh, an interesting uh, thing to look at for us because you know, um, first of all, we, we both went to Duke undergrad and Kareem went to Duke for business school. I went to school. So we're well versed in, in money, money, money management, private equity, venture capital. Um, and there's, there's definitely some very specific criteria and difficult for all companies uh, to, to raise capital. I think that um, where we really saw a, a huge problem for ourselves was, was after, you know, losing um, our main customer, as Kareem had mentioned, and being in a position where we had we had faced systemic racism, there wasn't really anyone that could understand that. And so therefore, um, to be able to finance a company that actually had, had taken a blow like that was basically impossible. It's like, it like uh, catching a falling knife. And so um, we just had the, uh, the will and the, and the, um, uh, the training, quite frankly, to, 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 to do what a lot of companies have to do is pivot, cut expenses, we probably cut our operating expenses 25%. We um, completely shifted our business plan to a natural channel um, e-commerce playbook. And, um, and, and, and really once COVID hit, we were in a position where, um, you know, where you could look at Amazon and see the throughput. And so that was the great equalizer in terms of performance. Um, in terms of equity capital, it's just been shocking to me that um, they're really, uh, as many private equity firms as there are, because there's literally hundreds, um, there really um, was a, uh, there really have been a number of people that have taken meetings and, you know, hung around the hoop and things like that, but very, very little leadership in terms of taking on um, black owned companies, because I think that um, it's not just that first check, it's that second check and that third check, because being important, being um, successful in our industry requires um, velocity and POS throughput. And a lot of the companies have, you know, 10 million, 15 million, 20 million in the, in the, in the till to, uh, to deliver that. And so I think that there's only so, cre so much creativity you can have as a marketer. At some point, you have to have consumer marketing spend. And that's where um, 
we've really uh, not seen open doors for us. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So when, when you were on the, on the cover of, of uh, the, the industry trade magazine, you had a little, you had a little assist from the assist king of all time, Magic Johnson. Absolutely. How does that work out for you? That's been amazing. I'll, I'll say a little bit and Kareem say a little bit. Um, but uh, Magic has been very well respected in my community and, and in the, the general sports and, and overall community, not only because he's one of the greatest Lakers of all time or the greatest Laker of all also because uh, post basketball, he was able to do a major deal with a number of companies, including Starbucks, bringing uh, urban um, spending power together with a great brand, corporate America. And he proved that out by growing 125 Starbucks with Howard Schultz directly and then selling his piece back for $70 million. And so I think it was a slam dunk. The stores were the highest per caps um, ever in Starbucks history. And they took that strategy and ran with it. That happened in the, in 2000, and um, and then se- and then separately, he actually has raised private equity f- uh, funds, including with Guggenheim and with uh, uh, you know some other folks, Ukaipa companies, and and some others. So he's shown that you can go to Calpers and raise private equity capital, but it took him seven or eight or ten tries to do that. So he's been amazing for us, and um, just in terms of opening corporate doors and and understanding the journey. And then I think what's happening now is that um, he's, he's basically looked up to by a lot of African-American athletes and entertainers who now want to invest on a social impact basis and see our, see our company as a way to, hey, in their local community, uh, push for healthy outcomes, um, uh, push for healthier eating in their families and things like that. And so I think having Magic has been amazing. And he's actually going on the Jimmy Kimmel show on February 3rd to talk about our brand. And then um, we are actually on a business plan pitch with the NFL Players Association, also on February 3rd, um, talking about our company to many athletes. So it's been an amazing journey for us. That is so awesome. I mean, we're we're having this, we're having this conversation right here at a good time, tune into television. That's right. So what, what, what skews are are you, are we talking about here? I know you you guys have a a lot of different stuff. I, I I put your powder in my morning smoothies every day, Uh, you know, and this is Costco. So they specialize in big stuff. Uh, What what, what kind of products can we see on the shelves there? So this one right here is our, um, our weight loss, plant-based weight loss uh, shake that's going into Costco. Um, This is in 40 Costco stores. It's a, you know, it has Garcinia Cambogia in it, uh, chromate, and uh, it's it's differentiated by anything that's ever really been in there because it's focused on weight loss. So appetite suppressant, uh, fat burner, and that's really our goal. We've been trying to figure out ways to uh, to get people to lose some weight because according to American Diabetes Association, if you just lose 10% of your body weight, you can go from uh, pre-diabetic to healthy. Yeah, and I noticed you said chromate too. That's a branded ingredient of chromium that'll help you deal with blood sugar issues. So yeah. you know, as as they call you know diabetes and obesity, now they call them diabetes because they exactly. just go together. Exactly. So I mean, that, that's really great. Like you're not just like your your average run of the mill protein company, but but you, you've got some really good ingredients to really go after weight loss and diabetes. That's a really good story. Yeah. I mean, I'll even say that like uh, Chris Paul, a ball player that used to be with the uh, New Orleans uh, Pelicans and then, you know, all throughout the NBA, uh, he he was a part of a a documentary on Netflix called Game Changers. And uh, it's done a lot as well as with uh, What the Health to to show that eating a plant-based diet, you know, can really reverse diabetes. And, um, and, and so, one of the things that, that, um, that we're really focused on is we know that a lot of the people that, that we know, and I'll even call myself out on this, uh, have learned about eating plant-based, but you know, can't quite or haven't quite gone 100%, you know, still love you know, whatever too much, for, in my case, the seafood. Um, and, uh, but that's the, the goal is to get a product that tastes good, that's clean, that's plant-based, that can help you lose weight. And so, in helping you to lose weight, we think there's a lot of consumers that want to eat plant-based, want something that tastes good, and they want to lose weight. And then there's, um, you know, then there's more of like our mission and vision, which is around calling in new consumers to the category, such as 
African Americans, Latinos, as consumers who really need to lose weight, you know, as, as Kareem said, um, and can actually, in doing it with a plant-based part of their diet or solution, can actually um, really, you know, get their insulin un under control, um, reduce the fat in their stomach, and um, hopefully reverse type two diabetes. Yeah, let, let, let's let's dig into the this Costco situation a little more if you can. You know, I I've spoken with Costco, you know, a couple of years ago, and it seems like the last thing they want of any company is a product recall. So so they define quality as safe. And yeah. so what do they ask of you? Do they ask anything of you to sort of vouch safe your product safety? Uh, Kareem, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we all of our, all of our man manufacturing facility where we get our stuff manufactured has, you know, good manufacturing uh, practices. You know, they had to vet the product, of course, um, and understand the ingredients, you know. Um, and so, you know, we got it uh, certified, non-GMO, you know, so we showed them all the certifications and, and yeah, so they, they do vet the, the product. Um, and, and really, that's just something that we've been accustomed to. I mean, we've been in Whole Foods before, we've been in, in Mother's, we've been in all these different places that are adhere to really strict guidelines. And so that's just, that's an easy test for us. I mean, our products are, are high quality and, and we, we haven't had any root calls ever, you know, knock on wood, um, but, uh, but that wasn't a concern for them. And I, yeah, always, so I, I, always, I always like to joke that, uh, you know, one of our uh, endorsers and co-investors is Grant Hill. And his mom has been a mentor of Kareem since college at Duke and mine uh, subsequent to college. And uh, she's always told us, you boys better not do anything where Grant is on that ticker on ESPN. So uh, for all the due diligence that's done from a regulatory perspective, and we've had the top law firms, Venable and others, um, diligence, every everything we've said, everything we've done on pack in terms of ingredients, things along, and as well as other um, industry uh, legal uh, law firms. So we feel like we we were we were already coming to the party, as Kareem said, you know, pretty much at the highest levels, and and having had some of the top industry executives uh, work at our company in the last five years. That's awesome. So did did you guys did Costco ask anything of you that? that was different from what you had heard before from the, the natural product retailers? I don't think they asked us anything different, but I think that there's some, um, you know, uh, high hurdles um, in dealing with, with Costco that affect any small business, but definitely, uh, and because every, pretty much every black owned business is a small business, um, you know, really makes it difficult for any, any small business and therefore every black business which is like the guaranteed contracts that a lot of these retailers have, where if it doesn't sell through within three months or six months, yeah, you could be eliminated from the set. I think that um, that doesn't give, um, you know, minority companies, for example, enough time to raise equity capital and do and deliver the, the um, marketing. So I think that, um, you know, if, if, if larger companies like, not, not to single out Costco, because it's an industry-wide practice, but, um, if there were long, if there were more senior level commitments to um, minority companies, I think people would would see, um, you know, the guarantee contracts, um, the recalls, and, and the um, and the send backs of product, um, you know, the marketing budgets and and the and the, the margins that they need people to work off of. There 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 could be or should be some level of an on onboarding um, strategic partners, both in supply chain and marketing and in the raising of, in, uh, of equity capital, because uh, what I didn't get to earlier is there is a whole industry called impact investing. That's a, a trillion dollar industry that could be investing and partnering with companies. So I think that these are the things that are, are barriers and that, um, you know, are where it's, you know, basically a quick in and quick out for companies like us. I think that where we benefit is that we've had products in the market for, for many years and this particular SKU has been sold on, on Amazon um, not the specific SKU, but the, the family of, of products have been sold. And so we know um, what consumers think about our products and we know how to market our products, as well as the fact yeah. that I would say there's a huge opportunity gap for us because there's kind of the natural health food brands and then there's kind of like the, the, the you know, 
the tried and true diabetic brands, but there's not that hot, sexy, cool brand in the middle that's going to hit your 35 to 55 year old pre-diabetic who's not really his mom and is not really a, you know, a tree hugger, but it's somewhere in the middle. And as a matter of fact, we believe that that's, there's more people like that than, than of the other two extremes. Yeah. So let, let's talk about what new markets this opens up for you. Like it's not the 4% health food store shopper, and it's not maybe your traditional BIPOC consumer. Is this like Miss Suburbia? Like, does this open like a whole new avenue for you guys? We're going to have a fun conversation here. because we, 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 we are waiting to see the numbers and we all have uh on our team have, have we have a very diverse team first of all um, kareem and myself we have a, a vp of sales and marketing shannon charles who's formerly at neo cell and we have uh, our cfo is a, a woman named Catherine zhang so we we definitely have um you know the yoga mom at the table we have like i say covid claude who lost some weight during covid and we have uh you know people who, who care about diabetes as well so you know we really have um you know a, a very um, diverse team uh, solving, a, solving a multifaceted problem. Um, in terms of your question, I would just quickly say that, um, you know, we, we think that the, um, the, the, the mom shopper who might be a yoga mom, soccer mom, uh, who, who loves plant-based, who loves missing driven uh, products, uh, but has, 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 has started to shop in Costco um, for a bigger family, as opposed to maybe in Whole Foods, she's gonna love our products because it's really clean and it tastes good and it's low sugar. Um, we believe that there's a consumer who's probably more like myself, who's um, prone to getting diabetes, has a family that has diabetes, that's scared of getting diabetes. And that, that shopper is already one of the 100 million Costco members already walking through Costco and they see Magic Johnson and they're gonna pick up the product because of that and they're gonna pick up the product because they heard it tastes good and that's low sugar and they can lose weight. Uh, and then I think that there's, um, you know, just people on different different um, shades of that, you know, that'll come in and, and pick up the product. But but, but dominantly the, the plant-based weight loss, low sugar are, are, the, are big call outs uh, for our product. Yeah. And, you know, just getting in to Costco, that doesn't necessarily mean success. Like you said, you're in the final four. Are, are, there, are there sales goals you guys have to meet in order to stay in the store? And is that any different from any other retailers? Like, is there a different kind of sales pressure to, to stay with them? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a sales pressure um, and there's a sales goal. Uh, but good news is we've been in the store, you know, um, four days and uh, we're already at, you know, 85% of our weekly goal. So you know, we're already we're already crushing it just in our first four days there. So uh, we hope that that trend continues. We haven't even really turned on the marketing machine yet. Um, you know, Mac Johnson, like a, like Claude said, is going to be on Jimmy Kimmel talking about it. He's going to post. He's going to get his friends to to uh, to talk about it. You know, we um, we posted a, a heartfelt message on LinkedIn and currently one hundred sixty thousand people saw that. So that's actually been our biggest uh you know, in the whole eight years in the company, that's been our biggest um, awareness. You know, and that, that wasn't that wasn't a post that we actually paid any money and any paid sponsorship. It was just organic. And so, uh, you know, we believe we have a message that resonates. And so we think that just that alone is going to get us where we need to go. But once we actually put some money behind the marketing machine, which you have to do in order to be in these places anyway, I think we're going to be just fine. You know, we... Uh, we have a, a, a product that uh, that tastes good, and then we have a mission um, and, a, and a corporate mission that people find it easy to align to align with. Yeah, I love it. You, you guys are just are ringing all the bells here, and as you pointed out, you got you got two women also help you lads, you know, run the show. And as we all know, girls kick ass. So, um, <laughs> So, you know, and now you're in, so you're, you're in Costco, you're in, you're in from coast to coast, you're in California, you're in New York, Florida, Oregon, you're in 13 states plus uh, Washington, D.C. And what would you say, 60, 70, you know, uh, individual stores. How does that sound? 
How does that, that sound sounds, to you guys? You know, that sounds amazing. And let me say a little bit uh, to your viewers. I mean, we need everyone's support. We're a uh, vision, a social impact brand. You know, we're in uh, San Diego, we're in uh, LA, we're in uh, the Bay, and we're in Seattle. Uh, as you stated, we're big in Chicago. We're going to be, we're big in Atlanta. We're big in the DC area, um, in lot, New Orleans. Texas as well. Texas, big in Texas, both Houston and Dallas. And so really, we, we really need people to show up for us. We've, we've uh, been absolutely blessed by the industry um, from Tom Arts to Carlotta Mast to uh, Spark Change. Um, you know, we know that there's a lot of really great people out here that, um, you know, want to be the change, um, you know, that, they wish, that are the change they wish to see and have done a lot through last year's uh, volatility uh, that we've all, you know, experienced. And, um, and, and we think people are, are already showing up for us. They're showing up for the vision and mission and they're showing up for uh, unity. And, 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 uh, and just no matter who you are, no matter your politics, no matter whatever, let's all kind of have some fun again. And I think that um, our, our goal is to uh, bring our brand story, bring sports entertainment, bring the flavor of uh, a black owned company, bring it all into the, into the, into the industry in a fun and cool and inviting way with, with a dope product. And we think we've got that. So we're hoping that, uh, that people uh, pick up the product, enjoy the product and, um, and, support, and support what we're all about. Claude, that was an awesome message. For a second there, I thought you were the chief marketing officer, but uh, <laughs> you nailed it. So it, it's good well, talking to you. Claude. Like to drop mics. <laughs> <laughs> right. So good talking to you boys. We got Claude Tellis, uh, CEO, Kareem Cook, the CMO, NatureAid, hot, sexy, cool, in Costco, saving the world, ringing all the bells. Love talking to you guys. And uh, we'll see you around live in person one of these days. We'll get through this thing. Good to see you guys uh, just, just really nailing it today. It's really good to talk Me to you. Too. I wish you all the best. Thanks, Thanks for having us, Todd. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.